to show him the respect that he richly earned simply because he was born in this country, because he's a human being, and because he is not expendable. That's why this flag was flown. And I have a resolution that will be presented to the family. And this resolution will become a part of the records of the Congress of the United States of America. This resolution is going to say to those who look through the vista of time that at this time there lived one among us who was a child of God who was taken untimely, but we are going to make sure that those who look through time, that they will know that he made a difference within his time because he changed not only this country, not only the United States, he changed the world. George Floyd changed the world. And we're going to make the world know that he made a difference. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a duty, responsibility, and an obligation not to allow this to be like the other times. We have a responsibility to not only George Floyd, but to all of those other persons, Breonna Taylor. Yeah. We have a responsibility to each one of them to make sure that we do not walk away today after having celebrated his life and not taking the next step to commemorate and to assure the future generations that this won't happen again. It's time. So brothers and sisters, the Congressional Black Caucus has done something. It's historic. The Honorable Karen Bass and her leadership, we have now a law that makes it against the law to put your foot on the neck of a person. It's against the law. You can't have a no-knock law. It's against the law. You're going to have to wear your body cameras. It's against the law. The Congressional Black Caucus is making a difference. But I believe there's one more thing that we ought to do to make a difference. We have got to have reconciliation. This country has not reconciled its differences with us. We survived slavery, but we didn't reconcile. We survived segregation, but we didn't reconcile. We're suffering invidious discrimination because we didn't reconcile. It's time for a Department of Reconciliation in the highest land, the highest office. It's time to have someone who's going to make it his or her business to seek reconciliation for black people in the United States of America every day of his life. That's what it is it's all about. It's time for us to reconcile. We need a Department of Reconciliation. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Just before Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee comes, let me tell you, we have a gate time at the cemetery for 3 o'clock. And I, I want us to be conscious of the fact that we've got a long, drawn-out program here. And I want to give uh, the guest speaker an opportunity to have what he has to say. I want to give the family, certainly, an opportunity to say what they have to say and the preachers that are on program to say what they have to say. So I'm asking all of you, if you would just be brief, brothers and sisters, be brief. Amen. 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 We've got to get through this. They, they have to get to the cemetery before 3 o'clock. And, you know, that's a long entourage going that way. So I'm asking you to be sensitive to everybody that's coming behind you. And let's try to keep it to the two-minute rule, okay? Let's do as best we can. I'm going to forego my remarks today. I can speak to the family at a later time and tell them and encourage them. And I, I want to give an opportunity to make sure that all the family's requests are met. So I'm asking you, when you come forward, please, 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 be sensitive to two minutes, okay? God bless you. God bless you. Encourage y'all. This is a time for...
your family. Uh, this is a time for the healing of the wound, for the pain that no one else in this place can walk and feel at this time. To the Floyd family, let me acknowledge your pain. Let me come as a humble servant and to be able to respect and to give dignity to the ages that the ex-slaves descendants have faced in this nation. Let me heal the wound of the majority of African-American men who have suffered at the hands of a wrong mindset, a warrior mindset instead of a guardian of peace mindset in the practice of law enforcement. But it is your time today, in keeping with that moment, allow me to offer these words. We know that centuries ago, they took a man, wicked man, put him on the cross, did not understand that though they were intending wickedness, that out of much intention of wickedness came goodness. Your loved one, George Floyd, this secular world, failed in its duty to intervene, failed in its duty to act, and failed in its duty to aid. But George Floyd answered the question in depth when it was asked in Isaiah, Lord, who should I send? Oh God, have mercy on us. There was a tall man by the name of Big Floyd who stood up and said, Lord, send me. And so as we come today, people of statute, those who humble themselves before God, we come to pay tribute to a man who said, send me. And I want to acknowledge those young marchers in the streets. They, many of them, could not be in this place. They are black and brown. They are Asian. They are white. They are protesting and marching. And I'm saying, as a mama, I hear your cry. That is what George Floyd wanted us to know. And I guess he wanted us to know, family, about CUNY Holmes and Jack Yates. Somebody might have said, what good comes out of Nazareth? But somebody else might have said, what good comes out of Third War? I am so grateful today to be able to say a man by the name of Big Floyd walked amongst us down those CUNY home blocks went on up to that crimson and red and began to mentor and make a legacy that no one can deny. I want you to know, my friends, that as these members of Congress, give me a moment, Chairwoman Karen Bass, the Congressional Black Caucus, leadership Barbara Lee, Congressman Hank Johnson, Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, Congressman Vicente Gonzalez, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia, Congresswoman Deb Holland from New Mexico. They're across the nation. They are here because they are honoring a brother that came out of the heart of Third Ward and Jack Yates. They are here to honor that leadership. So as I conclude, George Floyd was
was here on an assignment. It is painful to be able to accept that. I'm so sorry I know him in vain. But he was here on an assignment. Some folk on assignments only get to stay 30 years. When the wicked man thought they had done something. George Floyd took it 46 years. He walked this journey. He left behind sisters and brothers who could stand up against the adversity of life when the camera came and people asked to PJ and others, what do you want? We want justice. We want justice. And so my friends, I don't know if I'll ever get eight minutes and 46 seconds, Reverend Charlton, out of my DNA. I don't know if I'll ever be able to overcome the words, I can't breathe. Eric Garner's mother and Trayvon Martin's mother and all the mothers and Robbie told him, I can't breathe. But what I will say that the assignment of George Floyd and the purpose will mean there will be no more eight minutes and 46 seconds of police brutality. There will be no more eight minutes and 46 seconds of injustice and the mistreatment of African-American men at the hands of the laws of this nation and any other else. There will be no more eight minutes and 46 seconds that you will be in pain without getting justice. His assignment turned into a purpose, and that purpose was around the world that there are people rising up that will never sit down until you get justice. And so I say to all of those who are here, to that, from Senator Miles, from Grant Malone, who works in this venue, all of these pastors, what we say is that we will not sit down, like Rosa Parks said, until justice comes. And so let me make it very clear as I go to my seat. What was done for wicked, for those who born that day that we know, came to a day where a man rose. And so I say to George Floyd, it'll be up to us that his purpose and his assignment for the justice of this nation, for the fact that there will never be the brutality faced by a man that says, I can't breathe, and calls to a mama who loved him so. That is the rank and call for all of us. And so, as the Lord and the scripture said, when asked who should I send, the first who said, send me, was George Floyd. Are they going to be able, or he going to be able, to have each and every one of you say, send me to God be the glory for the great things he has done. May God bless his family and God bless George Floyd and the United States of America. God bless you and I honor you and pray for you. We have a flag uh, that will be given on behalf of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. This family will receive presidential letters from former President Barack Obama and former President Bill Clinton. Reverend, thank you for all you do. God bless you. Leaders and we are right. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Uh, 